There's so much I haven't said. So much new I've realized. About myself. About what comes next. For me, for my life here at Split Oak, for hope of life outside of this place. But first, I'm sure you're wondering about the fire. Split Oak Lane, Episode 10, White Picket Fence. In the distance, a warm orange glow was threatening the eerie calm of the blues and purples beneath me and Mustache. The night had come alive again, right in front of us. And then I'd realized we'd gone from the road and the farm back to the apartments, back to Split Oak. And it was on fire. I watched the flames eat at the complex. I turned to find Mustache, but he disappeared. The crawlers in the trees stared down at me, blinking slowly, unconcerned with the flames. And there I was, frozen, just shaking in the face of death. Bad things happen to everyone, but that doesn't mean everyone turns into a monster. I had no illusions about my dad, how I was only dishing out to Benny and Vivian what I was taught. I thought I had no choice but to walk the path he laid for me. I learned how to share my anger, but never anything else. I was always searching for another moment to express it, tearing her down, not listening when she needed me to, ignoring Benny when he needed help. My father at least kept me alive. He kept me alive and taught me to hate myself more than I loved anyone else. That's why I'm at Split Oak. I need to fix this cycle before I hurt anybody else. Finding Jesse was never going to change anything. It was just another way to avoid myself and what I've done. I can accept that now. I see the forest for the trees. I'm the super of this complex. I can let it burn to the ground or I can do the work required to fix it. Turn it into something I can love. It's not how I get Vivian or Benny back, but it's how I move forward. I ran over to the building to find all the residents safely standing outside in their pajamas. Other tenants from the adjoining buildings watch us from afar. Up close, I can see now that the fire hasn't moved from the top floor. It's contained inside one apartment, like Split Oak itself won't let the flames move past that spot. Mrs. Chen finds me. Francine's up there. There was only one thing to do. I had to run inside. Francine had been there for me in all my moments of confusion, anger, and fear. If there's anything I could do for her, it's this. I took the concrete stairs up two at a time. My pace didn't agree with me and I, I quickly got a cramp in my side. Winded, I reached the top floor. A fire up close is loud and hot and impossible to look at. I felt my eyes sweating and I had to squint to see where I was. It, apartment 11C. The door was ajar. Francine screams inside. I kick the door the rest of the way open and find her with Ned, holding her face in his hands, her body tied to the dining chair. He's telling her this is what she gets for interfering with fate. I ran over and I grabbed Ned by the collar, yanking him off of Francine. With a crazed look in his eyes, Ned started laughing, <laughs> gesturing to the flames all around him. The cleansing power of fire, a new start. It's finally his time to depart this earth into a heavenly channel. I stopped listening to his nonsense so I could focus my energy on Francine. I tried to untie her, but the son of a bitch knew how to tie a fucking knot. I yanked and I cursed and I ran out of hope. I needed to change tack. I couldn't give up. So I picked up the chair with Francine in it. I've never been quick, but God, I've always been strong. Ned scrambled to stop me, but the adrenaline kicked in and I picked my leg up and I kicked him in the chest. He fell back into the carpet. I carried her outside into the safety of the hallway, down the stairs as fast as I could. I asked Francine if she was alright and she gave me a curt nod, her eyes filled with sadness and anguish. She had only tried to bring him a fire extinguisher, but he pulled her inside. We reached the bottom of the stairs and I set Francine down in the parking lot. The crowd gathered around us and Miss Chin quickly whipped out a pocket knife and cut her loose. Francine stood and turned to me. She spoke very seriously. 
You have to get him out of there, Leo. Miss Chen cut in. He just tried to kill you, Franny. Let him end it all where he wants. If we let him do this, he's only learning he can do it again and again. Don't let him start a third fire, Leo. Get him out. Show him what he's done. Francine's voice sounded so different. So clear and confident and full of knowledge. She was right. Someone has to slay the monster. I was going to pull Ned out of his misery. I couldn't take the stairs twice again, but I jogged as fast as I could up the concrete spiral to the top of the complex. By the time I reached the apartment again, the door had burned down. I could see Ned clearly in the center of the room, surrounded by flames. He looked afraid and confused. He put his hand into the fire. His clothes slowly started to burn away, but his flesh... His flesh came out unscathed. He couldn't hurt himself here. Ned turned to me, eyes full of fury and fear. It's not working. We're rats in a maze, Leo. This place will eat us all alive like it did to kill Gore and Jesse. Split Oak was done with them, Ned. But it's not done with you. Ned's possessions continued to melt away all around us. I could smell the burning of the plastic and the wood and the hair and the cloth. I'd nearly hacked up a lung. I could barely breathe. Even if the fire wasn't coming to kill us today, it was still curdling our insides. Come on, we need to get out of here. Ned cackled and shook his head. <laughs> There's no reason. I can't course correct the flow. I'll never ascend. I'll never be free again. Our earlier conversation came into my head. The moment will find you, Ned. Eventually. You have to keep trying. If you don't, you'll keep burning this place down only to find yourself back where you started. A chunk of popcorn ceiling rained down around us, shattering on the floor. Ned barely dodged it. I thought I could see flickers of crawlers, blue and purple in the rafters. We had to get out of here. I reached out for him and he didn't take my hand. You need to come with me, Ned. Let's go. The fire hissed and more ceiling came down. A piece broke against my outreached arm. This whole unit was coming down. Would Split Oak keep protecting us? Or were we stretching to the lengths of its forgiveness? I didn't want to stand around and find out. This wasn't the way I was going to go. Not now that I could see myself clearly for the first time. So I did what I did with Francine. I picked Ned up, hoisted him into my arms and over my shoulder. It was time to get out of here. We went down the stairs and into the night. I've never been so glad to feel a chill on my face. The memo was short and sweet. A simple, well done. Which, I suppose, was Mustache's style. It was all coming into focus now. The long years, the empty anger, the broken promises. Building a castle around something you thought was more precious than gold. Thinking that the victory was always keeping everyone out. That's what Viv tried to tell me. She had a sea glass collection. All those bits of bottles and jugs and things that end up in the ocean and get tossed around and swirled around over the years, getting smooth and frosted as they're battered by the waves and the sands. It was the first thing they did on the first day of every beach trip. Viv even tried planning where they'd stay based on where the sea glass might be the best. She had every color in the rainbow and then some. They really were something else. Especially when the light would hit them just right in the window box in the kitchen. They'd leave a little flickering light show on the walls and ceiling during sunrise. Our own northern lights, she would say. One of our last big fights was over the shelf I said I'd make for her for her collection. She really wanted it done by Benny's 10th birthday. I had plans with the guys and said I'd get to it over the weekend or something. Well, guess what? It's still not done. I don't even know where I put the sketch I made for it. I gotta find that. Today, maybe. Looking at Ned with the flames all around him, it wasn't like looking in a mirror, really. But it was like looking at someone so used to believing in his own power and not believing that anything can take it away. Again, with the, you know, this 
the sea thing. He reminded me of those nature shows, you know, where they catch and tag a great white shark. It's a hell of a thing. The king of the ocean is pulled up in a sack and dumped on a deck, kind of thrashing and flailing about and chomping up and down, but not making a sound. Ned wasn't in control that night. He thought he was. He thought he was in the most control. But there are always other plans, always other moves you're not aware of, other voices you keep shutting out, and ones you keep thinking are the only sane ones in the whole universe. Somewhere Vivian is making a smart decision. Maybe it's about changing jobs, or what to tell a friend in need, or even what to have for dinner. Or maybe not. Maybe she's fucking it up and kicking herself for it. But I'd like to think that she's making it. We did for a while. And sometimes that's all you get, a while. And then you learn and you move on and you embrace what's next. We learned a lot and we're moving on. And what's next, that's now, I guess. I'm still putting all this together. I know we're not really talking about ghosts and goblins and wizards and witches here, but there's something or someone huge and unthinkable at work here. And I'm a guy on the payroll. Oh, hold on. Looks like the new tenant you told me about is here early. Does that happen? I mean, I guess you can do what you want, right? Hey, um, hi, Leo Moody. Yeah, I'm a super around here. So, please, come to me with whatever you need, okay? I can help. I've seen it all. Oh, thank God. Is this place out in the sticks or what? I had such a hard time finding this place. It's so good to see another human. Anyway, I'm here now, and as you can see, I've got everything but the kitchen sink with me here. Can you help get me upstairs? I'm in 3B. 3B? <sighs> That's a good unit. It is? Yeah, a good friend of mine just moved out of there. You're gonna love it. And let me just say, officially... Welcome to Split Oak Lane. <laughs>